Hi, this is Raj from MR Sports Cars. In this video, I'm going to talk specifically about one special feature that you find on some Porsches, and that is Porsche ceramic composite brakes. Now, this is very unusual, this car in particular. We actually have three cars in stock with Porsche ceramic composite brakes, PCCBs. This car is a 997 Gen 2 with them fitted from the factory. Very unusual for a road car, um, particularly a Carrera 3.6 to have these from the factory. But uh, we've also got a GT4, which I'll be talking about as well. And also a 991 Turbo S. So that's a 981 GT4 and 991 Turbo S, both with the same braking system, which was brought in, actually it was, Porsche was one of the first manufacturers of road cars to introduce PCCBs um, across the globe. Um, the first car was the year 2000 Turbo, 911 Turbo 996. That was offered as an option on those cars. Um, and it's a phenomenal system because it not only has greater stopping power, the friction coefficient doesn't vary as much with temperature. So you don't suffer from brake fade if you use the brakes a lot, particularly on a racetrack or something. The braking won't fade away like you do get with conventional steel brakes. They also have the cooling ducts as well, and they're a two-piece system. They don't rust away either. This car, amazingly, has done 60,000 miles, just under 59,900 and something. The brake pads and the discs are all original, all round. They've been regularly checked over and visually inspected as well as density checked and they are performing as they were when they were new. So that's a phenomenal um, testimony to the technology of this, particularly on road cars, how well it lasts, how durable they are. This car has actually um, had the last three owners that I've, I've known, and they've all thoroughly enjoyed having PCCBs. Um, the way you actually check for wear isn't actually looking for a lip on the disc like you would do with a steel brake, you actually, maybe we can see it on here, on this one, possibly not. I'll show you one of the other ones, but basically there are, um, you weigh them. So when the discs wear out, they don't actually lose surface uh, material, they actually get lighter. The density decreases and actually the most accurate accurate way to measure the wear on the discs is to actually take to take them off the car, dismantle them and weigh the discs and they've actually got a, a stated minimum weight of 6.685 grams for this particular disc here. And all of them will have that measure on them. So there's the rear. See that one's there, minimum weight 6623 grams. And the rear, minimum weight 6015. So in terms of these three cars, this car has also just done over 23,000 miles, I think 23,700 original discs, original pads. This car has had track use with it. It's done 32 something, 32,800 miles, and it's had new pads all round, but they weren't, I don't think they were worn more than 50%. It was just purely as a precaution to replace the pads, but the discs are original as well. Even with track use, they still look as new. Now, one of the other big benefits of using ceramic brakes is the unsprung weight reduction. So on average, all of these cars have unsprung weight reductions of around 20 kilos, which makes a huge amount of difference. Five extra kilos less at each corner means that they handle more dynamically than their steel equivalents. So that's the equivalent of just fitting, you could just fit lightweight wheels, for example, but that has the same effect as well as all the other benefits of using ceramic brakes, which work fantastically throughout the temperature range. Um, you get 
more dynamic feel. The suspension works better and it feels more light and nimble behind the wheel, a car with PCCBs. Now, in terms of care, one thing to be aware of is that the, the surfaces can be, steels are a bit more forgiving, say, if you drop a wheel on them um, as you're removing a wheel. So it's very important to protect the surface of the disc when you take the wheel off to change tires or do any other work. Just cover the top edge with some protective material. Um, and in fact, we have a special tool for cars with the locking wheel bolts like that 991 Turbo S, which basically allows you to slide off the wheel in a uniform fashion. You have this bullet here, which you insert onto the locking wheel thread, and then you can slide the wheel off of this um, surface, taking the wheel away from the disc without coming near it. So that's a nice specific tool designed to help protect cars that have ceramic brakes. Um, the other thing to be aware of is potentially stones. So if you're going on track, if you get a stone stuck between, well, even on the road, actually, if you get a stone stuck between the disc um, and the caliper brake pad set up, then it could leave score marks across like this. So this is why you get them visually inspected before you buy a car. Um, and the, actually the, the density also, going back to density and wear, you can actually get a laser device which measures the density of the disc to check whether it's within the tolerance of having enough material density to be um, a usable and acceptable above minimum weight ceramic disc. And they also look great. You can see that compared to a standard steel disc with the red calipers as, as standard normally, you get these lovely, um, I think it's actually speed yellow, the caliper on these cars, on all three with the, so that also denotes the difference when you see that, you know, and there's the locking wheel bolts there. So there's no five stud arrangement as you find normally on Porsches, you've got a single one. Whereas this Cayman GT4 has the five stud arrangement I think the similar size to the, the Turbo S setup um, with the speed yellow, which is different to this racing yellow here. It's much sort of buttery yellow color. And it really adds to the look of the cars, particularly this 997, because the discs and pad setup is much bigger than the steel setup. It looks more imposing, more impressive and more sporty. Now in the past, it was possible to spec cars that didn't have PCCBs as standard, such as this 997 with the PCCB setup. From May 2022, Porsche stopped that, so you can't actually spec PCCBs on a model that didn't have them as standard um, from May 2022 onwards. That huge weight saving I, I mentioned of 20 kilos is actually about 50% of the, the brake weight is the reduction. So that's a huge benefit, not only to handling, but also to fuel efficiency too. It will actually save you a bit of fuel along the way if you have PCCBs versus the steel setup. Now, the, the, the big worry that people have with PCCBs is the huge replacement costs. They do cost a lot of money to replace, but as I've demonstrated with this car, they, if they're looked after correctly and used just for, for road, fast road use or normal road use, they're absolutely fine and will last the life of the car in theory. Um, but the replacement cost is high um, for just as a guide to do a full setup with a Porsche main dealer is probably likely to cost you around sort of 16 to 18,000 pounds. So it is a big, big cost of equipment and fitting them if you do need to replace them. But as I said, these cars do tend to last a very long time for uh, reference, I think the just replacing the pads on this car was around £2,000 front and rear um, just to replace those on this lovely 981 GT4. The reason why Porsche charged so much for them is it's a much more complex manufacturing process to make Porsche cer ceramic composite brakes. And um, for example, they are molded at 200 degrees with aluminium insert. Um, 
aluminium fragments inserted into them and then they're pressed at 20 tonnes of weight to uh, compress them to the shape of the disc. And then once they're compressed uh, with 20 tonnes of weight, they are then actually baked for 48 hours, which um, is gradually raised, the, t the oven is raised in temperature up to 1000 degrees um, in that 48 hour period as well. So it's a very sophisticated and complex manufacturing process, but it means that the product at the end is extremely durable and um, perfectly capable of lasting the life of a car. The, fi the final process is actually heating them then um, to a further 1400 degrees over another 24 hours. So in total, these, these brakes are put under immense heat um, for 72 hours to make them as durable as possible. I mean, in terms of, in terms of the care, the thing to be aware of, as I said, is the um, um, knocking them by mistake by taking the wheels off. Just be very careful when you take the wheels off and instruct anyone that works on the car um, when you drop it off that it has ceramic brakes and they just need to be careful not knocking them. So the mechanic not knocking them with when they take the wheels off. Um, I would also advise not to use sort of um, corrosive, highly corrosive acids or anything on the wheels themselves with the and spraying over spray on the discs because there is an um, and like a protective coating on the surface of the discs, but I wouldn't <clears throat> want that to be degraded by um, particularly harsh chemicals that we now use these days to clean wheels. I'd advise using sort of like a sensitive um, pH neutral wheel wash rather than sort of an acidic or alkali um, wheel cleaner. Um, but that's just the only things you really have to be aware of. And uh, yeah, you should have many thousands and thousands, potentially hundreds of thousands of miles with a set of ceramic brakes. Well, I hope you found this video useful. If you do have any questions about poor ceramic brakes, PCCBs, please don't hesitate to comment below and please do subscribe and like our channel. Thanks for watching.